So Hurricane Michael was unique in that it was so strong. We started tracking it really about a week and a half before it made landfall. It was a tropical disturbance way down in the Gulf of Mexico, projected to move to the north, and of course that's what it did. And this is a look at it when it was in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. The water temperature as Michael came through was in the mid 80s. So some of the warmest water of the year, and it's the warm water that fuels not only the development, but the strengthening of a tropical storm and a hurricane. And at the same time, the atmospheric conditions were really ideal for continued development. It didn't have any real wind shear, and this just really exploded into a major hurricane, and it continued to intensify and strengthen all the way up to the point that it made landfall on the Florida Panhandle, and it did so at the top of the Category 4 scale with sustained winds of 155 miles an hour, just shy of Category 5. And this is the strongest hurricane to make landfall on the Florida Panhandle, and what I've highlighted here this gray circle, this is a radius of 75 miles from Panama City Beach. And within that area, you can see there have been, since records began, at least reliable records in 1851, there have been six hurricanes that were major hurricanes, category three or stronger, to make a landfall in that stretch of the coast. And notice, two of those were in the 1900s, 1975 Eloise was the most recent, the other four were back in the 1800s, and all six of these were Category 3 hurricanes. Hurricane Michael, when it came ashore and made landfall here near Mexico Beach, came in as a Category 4 hurricane, stronger than those other six. So this was very unusual for this stretch of coastline, and remember it maintained its major hurricane status as it crossed into southwest Georgia.